Hi, I'm Gracie from P3, and today I'm going to give a tutorial on how to create a relatively basic Mechanum wheel drive program in OnBot Java. And now before doing this, make sure that your robot is configured and that the wheels point in to form an X on your robot. Otherwise, this program will not work properly and your robot will not strafe or drive nicely. Now, the first step is to create your new program and give it whatever name you like. And then we're going to select the blank linear op mode. And this is a teleop program. And then hit OK. Open your program. And here, if you want to change the name of your program that, that appears in your driver app, you can do that by adding a parenthesis next to teleop and saying name equals whatever name that you like. And now the first step is to initialize is to do your initialization code. And here we're going to want to declare all of our motors. So you should have four motors connected to your wheels. And we're going to do DC motor back left equals hardware map dot DC motor dot get and then whatever name is in your configuration file. Make sure that this that this name here matches your configuration file exactly. Any, un, any capitalized letters, any spaces, and this program will fail. And then we will do this for all four motors. This is how you initialize any DC motor in case you have other motors that you also need to program with. And then in addition to this, we also want to reverse the direction of our two right motors. This is because by default, um, most motors will spin in the counterclockwise direction when given a positive power value. But since on the robot, the left wheels and the right wheels are facing in different directions, we want to reverse the right motors so that they'll all spin and so that the wheels themselves will all spin in the same direction when given a positive or a negative power value. It just makes it a little easier to program. The way that you reverse the direction of a motor is by typing in the motor's name dot set direction DC motor simple dot direction dot reverse. And we will also do this for the back right motor. So this is all of our initialization code. If you want, you could also set zero power behavior to zero. All right, so then once all of this code is run, the driver station app will show that the, that the status of the robot is initialized and it'll wait until you hit the start button. And then we enter our loop block. So this is saying while the robot is still active, which is until the driver presses stop, the code inside is curly braces will be looped and will be looped repeatedly. Ne the next thing we're going to do is make a couple of variables that relate to different gamepad joysticks. And this will help us determine what power to give each of our motors. So we're going to make a double called forward that relates to the gamepad one by left stick Y. And of course you can use whatever gamepad parts your driver likes best, but this is the setup that my team prefers. We are also going to need a variable strafe relating to gamepad one dot left stick X and one for turning, which I'll make gamepad one dot right stick X. And in addition to this, your, I forgot, your gamepad left stick Y needs to be negative. So as a quick refresher, if you know, and as a quick lesson, if you don't know, but Mechanum, the reason that Mechanum drivetrains can go in any direction, not just forward and backwards, but also side to side, is because of those little rollers. On a typical wheel without rollers, the force of the wheel goes in a direction 90 degrees against the axis of rotation but on a mechanum drive but on a me mechanum wheel this force is actually at a 45 degree angle and that means that if every single wheel is going in the same direction then the robot would go would go perfectly forward or backward if 
two wheels that are diagonal from each other are going in the opposite direction of the other two wheels, then it'll go either right or left. And if the two wheels on the right side are going a different direction than the two wheels on the left side, then the robot would spin. So the way that we can get it to do combinations of these three things is by making little math equations here. So we're going to start by programming the front right wheel. And we're going to set the power to our forward variable. And this is going to be positive. And then we're going to subtract the strafe variable. And then we're going to subtract the turn. And then if we do the front left wheel, we're going to also have it be positive forward. And then it's actually going to be plus strafe. Since these two are on the same side, and to strafe, we want wheels on diagonal sides to be going in the same direction. And it's going to also be a different turn since these are not both on the right side or on the left side. And then next we'll do the back left motor. And this is still going to be the positive forward. And it's going to be minus strafe since the front right wheel is diagonal from the back left wheel. So this so they should be going in the same direction when strafing. And we are going to have the same positive turn that we did with the other left wheel. And then finally, for the back right wheel, it will still be positive forward because we want all the wheels going in the same direction. And it will be positive strafe since back right is a cross from front left. So these will be in the same direction. And it will be minus turn since the right wheel should be going in the same direction as the other right wheel. Now this program will work as is for a very basic mechanum drive program, but there's a couple things we can add to make it a little bit smoother. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a new double called denominator. I think I spelled that right. Math.max of math.absolute value of forward plus Math dot absolute value of strafe plus math math dot absolute value of turn. And then you're also going to want to add comma one. So what this does is it's going to be adding the absolute values of our three variables up here. And it's going to be comparing it against the value of one. So what this will do is it'll take the absolute values of our three variables and add them together, and then the math.max will compare it against the value of one. So if these three variables added together equals 1.4, then, then denominator will equal 1.4. But if it only equals 0.8, then denominator will equal one. And then down here, we're going to add in a new set of parentheses, parentheses, and we're going to divide all of our powers by the denominator. And the reason that we're doing this is because a motor can only be set from a power of zero or negative one to one. So if one of these motors is, so one of, if one of these little equations adds up to be 1.4, then the motor will actually only be running at a power of one which can mess up our ratios between the four motors and then the program will not run as smooth. So this way, if one of these does equal 1.4, then the denominator will be equal to 1.4 and they will all be divided by 1.4. And this will reduce the powers of them while keeping the ratio the same. So this will make for a smoother drive. Another thing that isn't quite necessary, but that I like to use, is to, to make a, an assigned button on the gamepad that reduces the speed of the robot. In most games, there's tasks where you want the robot to, to be moving very fast across the field, but then there's also parts that you want the robot to be moving slowly for more precise driving. For instance, in Freight Frenzy, uh, you want to go fast across the field, but you might want to be slow when you're near one of the shipping hubs. So the way that you can do this is to add a if statement and an, and we're going to give it the condition of gamepad one dot right bumper and of course you can pick whatever gamepad variable you want 
and we'll add our parentheses. And if you're new to programming, an if statement only executes if the condition in parentheses is true. So with the right bumper, if it is not being held down, then gamepad.write bumper, which is a boolean, a true or false statement, will be false. If it is being held, then this boolean will be true, which means this that the code inside of these curly braces will execute. Otherwise, uh, the code inside this curly braces will be skipped over. So what we want is to make it so that these so that our speed will be cut, say, in half or by a third or by whatever amount that you want whenever the gamepad bu right bumper is being held. So the way we can do that is by taking our three variables up here and dividing them by two. There you go. If the gamepad right bumper is being held, then our speed will be cut in half. And if it is not being held, then the robot can go full speed. So you can also, of course, make this divide by 4 for quarter speed or divided by 1.5. Now feel free to mess around with this program and see if you can come up with any little tricks that'll make driving easier for your drive team.